Okay, hello. This is Dawn XYZ, and this is my first attempt at a net art speed run. If you're not a f if you're not familiar with this format, it's when you try to make an internet art piece all in one go within a fixed time limit. And for this one, I gave myself 40 minutes, and the idea was to just do do something basic, flat 2D, um, using the DOM. Uh, make a bunch of randomized DOM elements, and then add some animation in there. So here we are, starting out, um, I decided to do this on Glitch just because it's like all in one, but it that did end up slowing me down. Um, okay, so I'm putting in jQuery. Uh, this will speed up my JavaScript process. I could have gained some time here if I like just had the link on my clipboard, like clearly making mistakes in which, which link to grab. Going for the latest minified version. And I'm choosing to do this all in the index.html file. Instead of splitting it out into script, HTML, and style sheet, because I would rather have it all in one place. I don't want to have switching between files slowing me down here. So I'm starting out right away with the JavaScript. And I'm gonna make some rows, like a stack of vertical rows in my project. And I decided, like, maybe don't even give them classes. Like, there's going to be so few elements in this project. I'm just going to call them divs and style them from there. And main is going to be my container, and divs are going to be my rows inside it. And now here's why I start to get into the CSS. You can see I'm, I have like shortcut muscle memory for like BGC, which would expand to background color if I was over in Sublime where I've got Emmet installed. But yeah, that slowed me down here like several times over and over. I was doing Emmet short, shorthand and it wasn't auto expanding. So maybe next time I can gain some speed by just doing this in Sublime where I'm the most comfortable. And so I'm starting out with some colors uh, that are going to be placeholders. I like to give elements when I'm like just kind of blocking out the the shape of the elements. I'm, I like to give them placeholder colors just so I can see where they are. Um, so the main has a light blue background and the divs inside I'm going to I think make them pink or something. Hot pink. So I know I'm going to have 10 rows, so I gave them a height of 10 VH, so that 10 VH just means 10% of the viewport height, so I can stack up all 10 of them just like that. Um, so now I have to make the, the 10 rows that I want to make, and I'm dropping in a for loop from my clipboard manager and snippet, snippets lab. So you can see it turned all pink because that's all 10 rows stacked up. And now starting to get into some aesthetics. I want a checkerboard background. I'm gonna copy it straight from the question in Stack Overflow. Who cares about the right answer? This'll do. Already got something interesting going. And I was thinking about customizing the colors a bit. Again, glitch slowing me down. I could have done a select all and replace all, but I'm not familiar with the keyboard commands in, in glitch as well. Minimal comments are helpful, even if, even though it's a speed run, I, I do want to put some comments in there just to like give me like like bookmarks to jump back and forth to and to just reason about the code faster and easier. I do think it would save me time. 
And so, yeah, I'm not messing with classes here. I'm just going for the B element, which you'll see later I'll change the B element. Um, but start with B, which is normally just a bold element, bold tag. But here, like, I'm just going to change it and just make it a, an empty box. And you can see I made a mistake here, and I'm going to have to figure out what it is. Um, on line 47, it says let item equals jQuery B. And yeah, without the um, brackets, I wouldn't be making new Bs. I would just be selecting Bs. So now here I'm nesting in a, a for loop. So I'm just doing the same thing, just changing the number. I can't have I again, so I change it to J. And putting a random number of items in the rows. Random number between 0 and 100. And so this math.random times 100 means some number between 0 and 100. And you'll see, like, I'm totally using this math.random over and over again, overusing it everywhere. Um, I usually have a helper function for this, but I didn't today. I just writing it over and over again. So random width and random height for the item that's going to be in there. And you can see I'm trying to figure out why it's not working. Like why is why did my item disappear? And I decided to take a alternate approach. Um, Oh yeah, debugging on glitch is kind of weird because I'm like debugging an iframe inside. So I'm like, okay, dot width and dot height, that's not going to work for me. I need to use CSS, jQuery CSS function. So just dropping that in instead of just dot width or dot height. Okay, so you can see those lime green boxes with random heights and widths are there. They're just kind of weirdly stacked up. And I'm going to mess with the CSS a bit to see if I can get them looking different. So trying display flex on the rows to get the items to kind of spread out within the rows. And along with display flex, always can mess with justify content to like space them out uh, sideways inside the row and align items which spaces them out uh, vertically so i've got 10 rows spaced out items inside of them it's not like aesthetically what i'm i'm not happy with it yet so starting to get some blocky elements I do not like the look of big chunky borders. It's not very cool. Thinking about my next move. So when it comes to aesthetic decisions, it's not always something that you know instantly what to do. Put borders on the rows to kind of see where things are sitting within their their rows and now i'm going to start messing with rotation functions i didn't ultimately end up using the rotation in the final piece but i wanted to give it a shot see how this looks so i'm choosing a random amount of degrees to rotate between 0 and 10 and then applying that random number to each item. And it's like, okay, that's just looking kind of janky, like what the hell. And I also wanted it to be like somewhat consistent. I didn't want just a random number on each one. 
So here, once it's up there, you've got a random rotation per row because it's one level above in the for loops. And so here I'm trying to like bring in some consistency on each row. So if I've got 10 rows, have the parameters for each one be similar. So I've got max height and max width per row be a random number. And then the items within that row can be between zero and that number for height and width. So it is starting to come up with some like continuity, consistency between the items in the rows. Still thinking about aesthetics now. Kill the rotation. And now I'm gonna go up into the CSS. And I think this is where I start messing with the contrast. I'm like, okay, these colors, not, not vibing with these colors yet. So I'm just gonna start switching out the placeholders to get something a little bit closer to an aesthetic visual experience that I'm looking for. So these are the colors of the, what was originally the checkerboard. And this is the color of the rose. Get rid of the border at least. Yeah, get rid of it. And what to do next? This is where I start messing with the contrast. So I was thinking about a style that's like blobby. And you can get this blobby style by turning up the blur and the contrast. Oh, not at that point yet. Still just doing borders and backgrounds on the items. This blobby style, if you up the up the blur and then apply contrast to the blur, like I'm doing here, you'll get blobs. So start with blur. Too much blur. And then add contrast, and it kind of like melds the blurry parts together. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, but this isn't this isn't what I'm looking for for the aesthetic that I want right now. I would have liked it to work. The other thing with the blur is that or the other thing with contrast is that if you're introducing colors, it makes your colors extreme. So, lime green it already kind of looks like that, but it's like you can't get a subtle shade of green or any color it just like blows it out to the max like purple just became this like hot pink magenta color but if you're doing black and white blur and contrast kind of kind of helps i mean it, it can it can look okay so i'm trying to work with this this contrast thing trying to get something good out of it Ultimately not going to use it, but going down a rabbit hole to try. Like, okay, does any of this work? Nah. Now I have to come up with the next aesthetic decision.
So now I'm kind of playing with the layout of the items in the rows. Trying to get something that doesn't look so basic. Because like basic squares are not that visually exciting. Squares and rectangles, I should say. I'm like, okay, what if I'd use rounded rectangles? But again, end up not feeling it because these are just too basic looking. now just like poking around with CSS like how can I get this to start looking cool like I kind of like the negative space that this variation is coming up with now and I like what the background is doing but there's got to be something else I'm messing with the the background um, the background pattern again. Messing with those colors that form it. So now it's just down to black and white in the background. When I started this piece, I did think we'd end up pretty much at black and white. Um, black and white is really pretty easy to work with. You don't actually have to think about the colors that go together, because black and white, even like shades of gray, um, it just kind of always works. It's a little shortcut for aesthetic. So I think around this part, I'm, I'm floundering a little bit. I could have probably saved some time if I had a kind of a defined plan from the start. Um, because doing aesthetic ex experimentation kind of eats into the time. But ex aesthetic experimentation is going to be necessary no matter what art piece you're making, so... You need time for it. But... If you can land on an aesthetic that works faster, that's, that's going to help your speedrun. Okay, so now I'm getting into a third level of loop. So right now we have rows and items, and I'm going to put boxes inside of the items. So this is like a third loop within the nesting loop structure. And it's between zero and 40 boxes inside of the items. And I think around here is where I start thinking about boxes and items like, cause I wanna just use the HTML elements B and I. Um, and this is where I realized they're backwards. Like, oh, I, I could have used I for items and B for box. Like, oh, that makes so much more sense. So I just like kind of switched the previous one out to I. Items are I and boxes are Bs inside. And again, these elements I and B, like B is just, it's kind of a legacy HTML element that you would put around a text that you want to be bold. In this case, like totally misusing it, using it as a box. Um, and I is kind of the same thing. It's you'd put it around an element you want to be italicized. So getting these boxes inside of the items, random widths and heights again, uh, they're gonna be smaller. And here I'm writing the CSS for the boxes. Typos. Again, I think next time I'll use Sublime and Emmet to go faster here. One of the reasons I use 
glitch is because I don't have to set up a, de a new dev environment. Um, I do have a project called NetArt Starter, though, which I should probably just use next time. Um, that's kind of a dev environment with auto-reloading. The way that the, the HTML page reloads automatically, that glitch does, is really convenient, and it normally wouldn't do that on the file system if you're working locally, unless you have some sort of build process. Um, but it would really be worth it. I need to be using Sublime and my uh, key bindings that I'm used to to speed up. So now you can see in the view these vertical white rectangles. Oh, trying the blur and the contrast again, like, oh, maybe it'll work this time. Nah. So these vertical white rectangles are the new items. Or the new boxes inside the items. And now I'm messing with margins, like randomized margins around the items and the boxes. So giving giving space, but also because it's random between 0 and 40, minus 20, we have a half chance for a negative margin. So negative margins will like squish things into each other rather than pushing them apart, which will help with the visual aesthetic of this chaos. It like makes things a lot less orderly when things are just kind of smishing into each other. Okay, so now I'm starting a new section. Um, this is where I'm starting to do animation, because I've only got about 10 minutes left. Uh, no, I've got about 18 minutes left in this speedrun, so that's a good time to transition on to animation, especially because the visual aesthetic of the kind of scene and the layout itself is like starting to get there. Um, so now I'm just, I've set up a basic loop function and you can see the first line in the loop function is request animation frame loop. So it's like immediately going to request itself to run again. And so we've got a, a loop that runs like it tries to go at 60 frames per second. And whatever's inside of this function is going to be run continuously. So the first thing I'm trying to do is mess with the background position of the background element. And I'm running into some issues here. I could have saved some time where I'm trying to do background position on the main element, but as I'll see later, the CSS for the background um, pattern isn't actually on the main element. So I'm just poking around like, why is this not working? All these errors that are just part of glitch, like these errors are just in the way, not something that I actually need to care about. So pop it open in a new window, and then check the check the console there. Didn't see any errors. Like console log question mark. So I can see that the loop is running. I've got question marks in my console, and I'm looking at the CSS, which is blocked by my video camera. And I'm like, why is this background position not working on main? It's because the background is an on main in the first place. I'm like, okay, where is the background? Aha, it's on the rows. So, up into the CSS. First, I'm putting my new copied background position string, which I just got from the front end. And now I need to get back up into the CSS and all of the stuff that's generating the background, I'm moving it up into main because I want to be do doing my operations on main, not on the rows. And now I'm getting somewhere. So the background size just like got huge. Now I know I can mess with it.
background size. Now I'm just gonna test it. Cool, I've got an animation. So my background size is one number that I've declared as BGP, just going up by one on every frame. And... I'm trying like, okay, if I do a height and a width of the background size, but this time BGP divided by two, see if that looks cool. And it looks cool, but it's not something that's gonna like repeat. Um, it's just gonna grow infinitely. So I'm trying to like make a counter now that brings it back down to zero if it hits a certain threshold. Um, so if it gets up to 100, it starts over. I'm like, okay, now we got a repeating thing, and this is kind of like a BPM counter thing, like, choo, 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 choo. Um, but that's not the effect I'm going for. It's like a little too extreme and in your face. It's like a strobe light. So what to do next? So I've got the background size to 200 px and 20 px, which is why I'm getting this like squished sawtooth background, which is cool. I like this, um, but I'm trying to figure out how to get a more interesting um, animation on it. But whatever, I'm moving on to the next thing, but I think I, I will get back into that background animation. So the next thing I'm going to try is with the items. I'm going to try grabbing an item, a random item on the screen, and popping it into a random box. Or the other way around. Grab a random box, or gra grab a random item and put it into a box. Let's see. So the first thing I have to do is grab the random item. So I'm saying, give me a random number between zero and the number of items there are total and I'm declaring this as a variable random element and that math dot floor is what makes it a whole number instead of a fraction so I've got the random element index which is the number and then I'm grabbing the item using dot EQ so that jQuery it's like I can do a select for all of the I elements, and then EQ just cuts that selection down to a certain index, which is the number of the item that I want. So I'm getting my selection, and I'm also doing it with the box. So random item, put it in a random box. And I realize now, like, I'm doing this backwards. Like, I didn't realize this when I was building it. Um, just, just realizing it now, but the items... Wait, the boxes are what are inside of the items. So I shouldn't be putting items inside of boxes. I just did it backwards. Maybe that's why it crashes sometimes. Okay, so now here I'm troubleshooting a crash. Like, the the app crashed. I actually don't know why, and I couldn't figure out why until I just I just ref ended up having to refresh it. So I'm, like, looking in the glitch terminal, like, where's the clue? Why is it not working? Like, okay, let me get rid of this stuff. Maybe my code broke it. Um, let's just try this again. Nope. Still just hanging. Killing me. Killing my run. So I'm just like restarting my my editor now. I know. Back to life. Okay, bringing back my code a little bit at a time. Okay, it seems to be okay. And now the last part. Hey, it's working. I can see elements being like shuffled around, and it's causing the DOM to 
to change and rearrange in real time. So that's exactly what I was going for. And I've got, I got a decent aesthetic going. Like this is not bad. It can be better, but this is a good start. Because I still have 10 minutes. 10 minutes to get this looking even better. So I'm like, okay. Can I do some animations here that are more randomized? So I'm going to like declare a random target number and count up to that random target number. And then once I hit it, choose a new random target number. And I'll use that number um, somewhere in the animation. So counting up the target number, the target counter. And trying to figure out where I can plug that in, like messing with the CSS, like, okay, which part of the CSS can I, can I start messing with in my animation? So instead of my background position string, I'm going to go with the default background position that I already had up in the CSS and start messing with it from here. Um, I could just like swap in those numbers and my target counter numbers. I'm like, okay, let's see. Let's get that back to like that checker, semi checkerboard pattern I had before. It is looking crazy over there. Check the blur one more time, and eh, just for fun, nah. Okay, where are we at? Trying to mess with this CSS a bit more. Let's see, like I've got a decent animation going pretty cool glitch pattern but what happens if i start messing with css now you can see it's killing me to type out the full css rules when i could be just doing two keystrokes So returning to that CSS string that's not, currently not animated, but I'm going to put it in there, like the target counter, that randomized target counter. So that's kind of cool. I've already got like one number animated, I got two animated. And now I got to make that target counter actually do the thing that I meant it to do. So if it hits its target, it's got to choose a new target. So I'm just dropping that target counter on more numbers in the original background position string. Try to see if I can get a, a cooler animation going. And that's pretty cool. Look at it. It's got like some of it's going up, some of it's going down. And I'm also thinking about the colors now. Like, okay, what if I, what if I change the color, the background color of the item that gets moved? To white um, so you can eventually see more of the items that have been moved because remember they it grabs a random item puts it into a random box on the screen and now messing with the css like okay maybe i can make my boxes dotted background dotted border instead of solid border um, get some variation going the dotted is kind of cool it's like a bit more glitchy and I'm getting somewhere, like this is looking cool. And 
I'm like, okay, so what if I put the... Let's just go crazy. What if I put the checkerboard gradient on the items? And then it just crashed. It just did not want to do that. So I'm like, okay, that's probably too much. Because there's so many items. Make it blue. Kind of cool. But still kind of an extreme... Extreme number. Extreme color. Make it green. Same problem. Nah. Borders? No. The black background is working best. But what else? What could be better? Running low on time, only at f about three more minutes now to finish the piece. So I'm trying to think of some high impact aesthetic plays that I could do now. And this is where I decided to make a, a big change late the game so I've got the width of my boxes randomized instead of the height making them wider and shorter and I think this is a, a good aesthetic play because it makes it more look more like scan lines where scan lines on software or glitches um, scan lines on screens are not vertical they're sideways um, so this is, this is referencing that a bit better, I think. And it's looking a bit more aesthetically interesting. And the last thing that I'm going to do before I wrap the piece is actually introduce some colors. So here I'm generating a random color. RGBA, meaning red, green, blue, alpha, and choosing a number between 0 and 255, which is 255 is white if they're all 255, but get three numbers. I just forgot about alpha for some reason, but instead of making my box white, when it changes, when it um, moves to a new parent, I'm giving it the random color. And here's where I'm like, oh no, I'm almost out of time in this color. It's, these colors are not right. And so I'm like, okay, I can mess with this color a little bit. I just want them to lighter color. Like, give me some pastels. So I'm saying whatever random number is chosen between 0 to 255, give it plus 200. And I'm... I got a bug somewhere. Some, something I just wrote messed it up. And there it is, missing bracket. So there we are. Got a pastel. I don't know if I love these pastels, and I meant to do it on the boxes and not the items, so that's why they're maybe a little bigger than I wanted. But here we are at 40 minutes. 40 minute net art piece. If you like this speedrun, leave a leave a um, thumbs up. <laughs> I want to try to do some more net art speedruns and hopefully get better at it. Work fast, work smart, make art. <laughs>